Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After running through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan Q&A where we answer Finn's fans questions. And boy, ladies and gentlemen, do we have an episode for you today. There's so much to talk about. It has been a great week if you're great couple weeks if you've been ever since training camp started it's been great like there's been no negative we have one super downer of a story to talk about unfortunately but other than that this is the best off season or start to a training camp like start to a a practice season i don't know i guess the best start to a training camp that i have ever covered on this show by far it's not even close it's so good that it's gotten to the point you know and we'll talk about it later, but I want I want to save that for later, because that's gonna be the um, the big topic of the uh, the show is Tua and his improvement. Because I want to talk about it again, but even that stuff has been amazing. So I I could not have imagined, especially with all the drama with X, and we're gonna talk about some of that today, which I'm super excited about, and the Deshaun Watson drama, all of that stuff kind of put a weird damper on the Dolphins offseason in a weird way because they had a, such a great free agency and in my opinion they had a great draft and then for some reason I guess the Tua hate kind of because there's nothing to talk about you kind of you constantly heard it on sports talk shows so I think it kind of got into Dolphins fans a little bit it got under their skin a little bit and it kind of I don't know it kind of ruined the mood a little bit um and it completely changed. I mean, the tide has completely changed, and I cannot wait. We got to get into it. We got to get into it. Let's get it. Let's let's um start with the uh, negative. Unfortunately, this is so this is such sad news. Um, this comes from uh, SB Nation. Hunter Long suffers a knee injury uh, in Sunday's practice. Um, this is, I mean, this is one of my favorite picks of the draft. I, I, I think he has a, such a bright future in this league. He's going to be a great tight end. His ceiling is high and his floor, I mean, he, at the, at the very worst, he's going to be Anthony uh, Fasano, in my opinion. He, you know, obviously was a great run blocker coming out of Boston College. Just has such a great game. He's, you know, this, if he was, like I said, if this was any other era, when, this is when I said when we drafted him, he would have been way higher on the tight end board than he was uh he is a and especially looking through a traditional lens as good as it gets for a tight end he has it all i love the way he plays the game he reminds me a lot of jason Witten, and i know i've said that a lot but it, it he has such a um unique game for today's game because he can do both he can block he can go out on obviously uh pass he's a very good pass catcher pass catching tight end in more of a traditional sense so i just really liked his game uh, and this news story is very unfortunate that obviously he suffered any injury in Sunday's practice. We don't know the severity of it yet. Let's get into this. Um, uh, sad news out of Florida. BC Former BC uh, pass catcher Hunter Long was carted off the field during practice. The rookie tight end was shoved out of bounds during 11-on-11 when he suffered a leg injury after catching a pass from Jacoby Brissett on a two-minute drill. Uh, it, so far what we know from Twitter uh, and beat writer stuff, it's a knee injury. It's a left knee injury. He had to be carted off. He, he tried to, he walked a little bit, but he was limping. Um, and then he couldn't put weight on his knee and then they had to come out and, uh, get him. The thing that makes me positive, I, I guess, and, and I don't think, I think at the very least he's going to miss a lot of time. Hopefully it's not a torn ACL. Maybe it's a bone bruise. Um, maybe it's a sprain. Who knows? But uh, the thing that makes me kind of, I guess, optimistic about this is the fact that he does, he did kind of walk around a little bit and then he had to be carted off. It's not like it was an instant, like, oh my God, my knee is gone. Like usually you see with ACLs. Um, so hopefully that, you know, at least he hopefully won't miss his entire rookie year. It sucks that he's going to miss training camp and probably preseason. Hopefully it's not that bad. Um, because he is, again, one of my favorite picks of the draft. I think, like I said, he has a very bright future. And it, he was definitely going to be one of those guys in preseason that I was going to keep my eye on. He's had a very hot start to training camp. If everything we've heard of the beat, I mean, everybody on offense apparently has, not apparently, has been, just had a, such a great start to this this offseason. And this the Dolphins have not had a great passing game. In a long time, even the 2008 team wasn't a great passing team. You know, it was definitely more of a West Coast style short stuff. 
you know, obviously Chad Pennington, especially at that point in his career, was not going downfield. He had a couple of, of nice deep completions, like one against Houston. There's a few others that I can think of that year. Um, but uh, for the most part, obviously, he wasn't stretching the field. That offense was more run-first style. We haven't had a great passing offense in a long, long time. I mean, Fitz has commanded some of the best passing offenses we've had in the last 10, 15 years, which is crazy to think about, but it's true. I wonder, because Fitz obviously in 2019 post, posted a top 10. I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. The point is, is this this is the best start, especially for a passing attack that I've ever seen covering this channel. Um it's not even close and it's 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 crazy everybody's popping off and even Hunter Long uh was having a really really nice start to his camp I mean he the 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 play that he was injured on um he he caught a deep like it said he caught a deep crossing route from Jacoby Brissett and he was actually running down the sideline and I, Nate um I, I can't remember I think it was Nate uh one of our safeties um just you know, standard kind of low blow to the leg there to knock him out of bounds. It was actually a shove, my bad. It was a shove. It shoved him out of bounds and uh, just a weird injury. So hopefully he can come back. He's going to be a great player. Um, and let's move on. Uh, it's, it sucks. As soon as I... <laughs> I, I saw uh, the X news, and then I saw the Hunter Long news not too long after that. I was like, God damn. Like, it, it just it sucks. Um, it reminds me of when Dustin Keller got hurt. And people might not remember this, but Dustin Keller was a Dolphin at one point. I think this was Tanhill's second year, and I was very, so excited about that because Dustin Keller was a great tight end for that short period of time. I mean, he was killing us every time we played him. He was part of those good Jets teams uh, that Rex Ryan had, and I remember when he tore it. was a similar vibe, I guess. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Okay, I guess we'll get into the X News. There's so much I have to say about this. The Miami Dolphins finally work out a deal with Xavier Howard. He will not be traded. Thank you, God. D dude, For there's so many reasons why this is such a, you know, I was talking to other Dolphins fans. They were upset. A lot of Dolphins fans, you know, got rid of their Minka jerseys. And, and over the years, a lot of people didn't really have a name that they could attach themselves to as a fan. I mean, there were so little great players on the team, or even good players for that matter. And a lot of them left, like, you know, Lamar, Miller, Olivier Vernon. Um, there's a lot. I mean, Mike Pouncey left at one point, even though he gave us some good years. Uh, Brandon Marshall. There, there's a lot of good players that kind of just came and went. Mike Wallace was not a great player. I don't know why I thought of him. If you bought a Mike Wallace jersey, that's unfortunate. Sue, Rashad, his, I, I guess you kind of got a good amount out of Rashad. There's just been a few players that, I mean, is a great example um that you know fans got attached to and uh invested money into obviously with the jerseys and that sucks when that you know it, it it's happened a lot over the last 10 years and it, it's been painful to see a lot of these great players go uh and it just it's a great feeling that they finally were able to get a deal done with who he if he stays on this track he'll go down as a top 10 dolphin of all time um he's already on pace to be the best corner in this the franchise's history uh, his interception numbers are up there with some of the greats in his first few years of his career, and he's missed so many games. I think he has more picks, or he's up. He's top. Um, he's close to Dion. Uh, his turnover, uh, the amount of turnovers that Dion got in this span, X has. I think more or j like right there with him. Um, so his, his production has been Hall of Fame level so far, and to lose a player like that would have been devastating. Especially riding the high that we had, and the defense that they've done such a good job with the, how they've assembled the defense to lose him would have sucked. It would have sucked. It would pull like you know pull the rug out of, from under us. It would have sucked. And now that we have him, um, <laughs> we get to watch a top three defense, and it's going to be so fun. So let's get into the news story. This comes from Pro Football Rumors. Dolphins Xavier Howard agree to reworked contract. Xavier Howard. The funny thing is about the, we'll get into it. I'm I'm already getting off a on a tangent. Back to the story. <clears throat> Again, this comes from Pro Football Rumors. I have so much I want to say about this. Xavier Howard is, is staying in Miami. The Dolphins and their star cornerback have agreed to a restructured deal that gives Howard more earning power, as Mike Garofalo of NFL Network was uh, has f first reported. Um, this was an unexpected outcome after we learned yesterday. Uh, obviously, uh, not after we learned yesterday, after we learned that Xavier Howard uh, requested a trade. There were some Dallas Cowboys rumors. 
Uh, the Dolphins fully guaranteed Howard's salary uh, for the 2021 season and added $3 million in incentives tied to uh, playtime and Pro Bowl and all pro appearances. The thing, yeah, the weird thing about this deal is it's not, I don't know, I've expected more. I think they're get, they're paying him $700,000 more. They're not going to find him for all the missed time that he's had. Um Obviously, they have a ton of incentives if he missed if he hits them, so he gets paid even more money. They fully guaranteed his money this year, um, so it. I don't know. It was a little. I was like, that's all it took. I expected it to be more, because uh, it it's not that much more. I mean, there's like, it's not that crazy. Uh, I'm glad they got it done. Either way, I don't really care, uh, and I could totally see them if he continue like if he continues to be great i could totally see because even brian said you know both sides kind of had to compromise on this deal if he has another career year i i don't think he's gonna leave miami um i think he will stay for them hopefully for the most of his career who knows like three years down the line where this ends up but i i can even after this year i think they i could see them extending him again um i could see that have been I could see how that could have been in the conversations leading up to this rework, because uh, again, the, the stuff the stuff that <clears throat> that he got out of this rework isn't like too significant. Um, so I could see them kind of revisiting this next off season and extending him even longer. But the point is, is um, <laughs> the point is is that it got done. That's what the point is. Thank God that this got done. I could not, it, it, I mean, obviously, I don't know, maybe I've come numb to it at this point as being a fan for so long, seeing so many great players either be rumored to come here and then not, or just great players on our team that we drafts that players we passed on, um, players that we let go out of the building that were really good. You know, it, it's been a, it's been a tough, tough, tough time. And it kind of, we, we, the fans won this. This is a win for the fans, ladies and gentlemen. This is a huge dub for the fans. Um, thank God Brian and Chris and even X came to an agreement on this, put their egos aside, um, put the whole conventional thinking thing aside, which is the most annoying part of the whole thing was like, well, people just don't do that. You just don't do that in the NFL. Uh, and I'm glad they put that aside to get this work done or to get this deal done. Um, it just says a lot about the organization. It says a lot about Brian's leadership. Even though he had a player post a, a very long Instagram um, post about how he wants to leave the team, how he's unhappy uh, here as a Dolphin, the fact that he <laughs> pushed through that, and not only that, but he made sure the players, even when, when they went, you could tell Brian told every player on the team what to say to the media because they all said the same thing about X. It was all. To show him, obviously, sign of love, number one, and respect, but to push through that and and to still to look past that and still do what Brian did, again, it's a testament to how great of a coach he is and how great of a leader of an organization he is. Because if this was anybody else, X was gone. If this was Adam Gase, he was. I mean, he would have been gone a day after this the Instagram post. Maybe not even. Maybe an hour after because of his ego. Uh, you know, lesser people lesser coaches lesser leaders this would have ended terribly this this is such an accomplishment and i and i really do mean this by brian to lead it because i I think there was a lot more that went into it than people think i mean i i noticed it in my when i brought up in my last podcast of how everybody you know athletes say all the time the sign of a great coach is when they start repeating what their coach says and the fact that he it's kind of a masterful plan um and I know it seems kind of simple, but it's not. I mean, most of the time, almost 99% of the time, these things end badly. And uh, <laughs> especially in today's athlete, like today's athlete, this never works. Especially when you request a trade, like 99% of the time that, that player is gone. And for Brian to 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 do all the little things to get it done, to get in the press, con- I mean, obviously he said, you know, write it down. He's not leaving, you know. We have to make everybody has to make compromises. We want X here to get the team to make him feel that every time he went to practice. Like it is a masterful, masterful job by him, and one of the best accomplishments the coach has had here in a long time. And a great shine. It's great, just a great sign of leadership. I mean, there's like I said, it's so rare for 
especially athletes today when this happens, to stay on the team. He People, guys, it got so bad to where he, he, he posted an Instagram uh, uh, post about this and made it public and on a Brian Flores team, by the way. And Brian still looked past it. And it didn't, it was like water off a duck's back. He's like, who cares? We, we want you here. We're going to get it done. And he got it done. And I, that, <laughs> I just can't believe it got done. I'm actually baffled. I mean, I had good feelings, especially off of the stuff that we, we were hearing and, and reading last week. I mean, he, you know, he came back to practice and stuff like that, all that stuff. But I think the, the obviously the headline is X is back, but I think the, the thing that people aren't talking about is what a job Brian did. Um, it, it, it cannot be like, like, it's crazy that it's as, as understated as, as, as it's been that nobody else, maybe some, maybe I'm missing it and I haven't seen people talk about it, but it, it really is a masterful job by him and his, <laughs> and his ability to lead an organization like that to, to get him back. And uh, again, it's a dub for the fans. Um, Dolphins fans across not only just because of the X thing, but because of the, the the off season in general, and we all owe it to him. It's all because of him. It's not because of Chris or Stephen Ross. We've had ten years of that. We've had what I think five years of Chris, even more than that as a scout. Chris was a scout there, obviously longer. And we we owe it all to him <laughs> that this is turned around. And um, I wish there was a medal we could give him because uh, he. He really has done a great job, and um, the Dolphins fans deserve it. We really do. After 10 years of crap, more than 10 years of crap, and especially the last, you know, the Adam Gase era was really tough. Re- like, really tough. Like, really, really tough. And, uh, you know, and that's why he's my favorite current Dolphin right now, is because of stuff like that. And uh, it's great. It, it really is. It's really, really, really nice. And, again... It's it's nice on so many levels. Not only did he get X back, but it's, you know, we've had terrible luck with drama, all that stuff as Dolphins fans over the last few years. Uh, and, you know, going into a season, we're just feeling gross and like, oh, God, we have to watch, you know, this team this year. You know, we don't, this year, it's been amazing. You know, it's, you know, I, I think people take it for granted a lot of the time. Uh, I still remember the Brock Osweiler year. I still remember all the bad years that we've had. And I, re- you know, obviously you reflect on that and you compare, and it's just such a good feeling to have as a fan to know that we're going to be watching such a good team. This is the best team by far. Oh, any of the last ten years, it's not even close. It's not even close. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, and that leads us into our next new story, which is Tua, which we have to talk about. I, I want to say. I want to start with where I was. So the the story is is this. I mean, if you just read Twitter, read any publication where dolphins post anything, just read that, and that's the topic is Tua and how great of a start he's had. You know, for people that have watched him in training camp, he look. I mean, he looks so much better than he did a year ago. And I know that, and it's not even dumb. <laughs> you know, and I have so many things I want to say about this, but I want to start with this. Um, obviously, I was a huge, and I was the biggest, like, we have to trade for Deshaun Watson if he's available, and I've completely turned around on that. I, like, completely. I don't, and you guys have known that, because, I mean, I've completely changed my opinion. There's no way I would trade Tua after this training camp. Not a chance. Not even, not even, wouldn't even answer the phone. Wouldn't even answer the phone. I don't care if it's Deshaun Watson or not. The stuff that we've seen from him is, it's and it's crazy as a fan, um, because of all the you know poor quarterback play that we've we've watched. Like, it's like man, I I haven't seen this in a long time. Like, I mean, oh my god, this? He's on our team. Like it it it. it I cannot think of the the last time that I've, I've had a complete like, one eighty on a player. I don't know, he's, just the stuff, and I just wanted to, to talk about it, like, the stuff that we've seen so far from him, and some of the throws that he's been making, uh, 
just completely has changed my opinion on him. You know, people like Chris Sims and some other talking heads around the sport of football, obviously, said one of the biggest things of Tua was you didn't hear a lot of buzz from him from training camp his rookie year. Like, great quarterbacks, you always hear, you kind of hear that buzz around the building, around the fan base that keep a close eye on the team, and he has that this year. I mean, he's just throwing lasers all over the field. Um, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Obviously, coming off two years removed from the hip, getting rid of Chan Gailey, installing an offense that is uh, a modern offense instead of offense of 2005. I think all of those things... Are gonna are kind of contributing to this great coaching, obviously, Con- and, 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 and con- the confidence that Brian puts in his players, and um, he really sets a tone where you really want to be a part of it, and uh, and I think that's helped as well. It, obviously, the leadership of the organization has obviously helped that, and uh, his ability to make people better and get people better and focus on your weaknesses and correct those. I think have all contributed to him blossoming into what he's he's doing. I know it's I know it's camp, but um, I've seen enough, and uh, yeah, that's all. I'm, I mean, he's it's not even like and I know X hasn't practiced, which is great that he's going to become you know he's coming back to in it, that he's coming back to practice with the team. I know X hasn't practiced, but um, I don't care. Like there there have been those are some obviously we've seen some tight throws and some down the field throws. And obviously, it's not just Tua, but it's the weapons around him that have. I mean, I forget you forget Lynn Bowden's on the team, and you know it's there's so many weapons, there's so much depth at that position. Matt Collins has had a great camp so far too. He's had a fantastic camp with obviously Devontae Parker and and Will Fuller hasn't even practiced yet. Like Will Fuller hasn't even practiced yet, and Devontae Parker barely, has barely just come back, and he caught a touchdown the other day, and he just came back. Okay, so this man's throwing tubs to everybody. I mean, Jakeem Grant got a touchdown, and in, in, uh, in a red zone drills the other day. So <laughs> I don't know. I've I've just I've never I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. Um, and uh, yeah, I was definitely wrong. Um, I just complete my cha- completely changed my opinion on it. Uh, just from what we've seen so far, and just not even that, but from people not that aren't even connected to the Dolphins that have went to the camp and watched him, from what they've said, like it's all been positive, all of it's been positive. And remember, this is coming off of all the crap that everybody was talking, even me, about the Deshaun Watson stuff, and then obviously he had that practice where in the rain where he threw some picks. Not even I don't even it wasn't even training camp. Um, <laughs> people freaked out about that too. I think the next day he threw what four touchdowns, um, and people and, and it's it's crazy that he's had such a good camp, dude. People gotta understand, and this is the last thing I'll say about it. People have to understand something, uh, and I'm sure Dolphin, especially people who listen to the show, because y'all are obviously very hardcore fans. Um, we had think about all the quarterback camps that we've had. We had seven years of Tannehill. What at any point in time, maybe twenty sec seventeen, maybe. Before he got hurt, has there ever been a quarterback that's had a camp like this that has generated so much positivity? Jay Cutler didn't do that. Tanhill didn't do that. Obviously, Brock Eisweiler didn't do that. Matt Moore didn't do that. Chad Henney didn't do that. Okay, like every quarterback from 2010, and I'm just keeping it through this, 2010 to 2020, none of them did that. So it's, you know, there's a lot of firsts and a lot of we haven't seen this in a long time things that have happened this offseason. And uh, so that's a good thing. Um, let's move on. Uh, I can't, I cannot, cannot state this enough. Brian, I mean, we are so lucky that we got that right. Um... I mean, it's the best decision Chris Greer has ever made, and it's by far the best decision Steven Ross has ever made. So, um, okay, so let's get into the fan Q&A. Yeah, we're there already. We spent 25 minutes on that. Um, 
So yeah, let's get into the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. Uh, this first question comes from Mark. He says, I've been, uh, it's been said, again, this question comes from Mark. He says, it's been said too is lighting it up. However, he's holding the ball too long and that line isn't that great. What are your thoughts on this? I don't know about any of that. Any of that. Um, maybe people are have that. I mean, it is, it's, I think the thing that you kind of have to kind of take a step back to is it is training. There is no real threat of anything that's going on right now. I mean, um, I think that's going to, I mean, I don't know. That's an interesting question about Tua. I think it comes down to what is his, how good of an extender is he going to be? And then I'll criticize if he holds the ball on too long, the ball too long. If we see kind of a jump, and he had it his rookie year. I mean, he had uh, he had plays where he made two guys miss on a sack. So you're always going to kind of have that with Tua. Um, I don't think you'll ever not have that. It just comes down to his ability to extend, and can he do it? And he, we saw it at times last year. Um, and with a healthier Tua, hopefully we see even more. Um, but I think it comes down to his ability to extend. Um and whether that will be a significant problem. I mean, with quarterbacks like that, you're always going to have them hold the ball too a little bit too long. I mean, Aaron Rodgers still holds the ball a little bit too long, especially in crucial, crucial downs and distances. Uh, it, it's just kind of how the quarterbacks play nowadays that have that kind of ability, and he does have that. He has that niftiness in the pocket. So, uh, I mean, it is, just, it is what it is. Uh, it just comes down, like I said, to his ability to extend and whether that will be an issue or not. This next question comes from Ahmed, and the court and the the, the the online is another thing. I know that you know the first day of pads they didn't look like a, they didn't look fantastic, but that's I mean listen, they'll come along. You know I, I I'm not panicking yet on that at all. But I would wait for the joint practices to make a like a big dis like um a big observation on that. And you know Brian has said that like you know preseason hasn't happened yet. The joint practices haven't happened yet. You know these things compound. You get that's the, this is the reason we do this is to get ready for the season. So of course not everybody's going to be on their bet their A game yet. So I would wait for the for the offensive line. Um, this question comes from Ahmed. He says some reports claim Waddle doesn't look right running full speed in camp. Do you think it's concerning that the injury he risks aggravating in the national uh, title game may follow him into this season? Again, this question comes from Ahmed. In case I didn't see that. Um, no, I don't have, I think they've been kind of careful with him. I, you know, I think, at least I think that, um, which is a good thing. I, I don't know. He's looked fine to me on some of those touchdown catches that he had. So, you know, I, I, I don't think, uh, it's too big of a deal. I think maybe it still bothers him a little bit, at, but I don't think it's like something where it's like, oh, maybe he's like 85%, um, and maybe even 90 and the other 10% is just, it kind of hurts when I run. But I don't think it's anything too super crazy. Uh, Almond goes on to say in a second in his second question, he says, "I do believe that this team should make amends for the Noah pick and sign Jeff uh, Gladney when possible. He was taken a pick after Noah was. <clears throat> I mean, if listen, I mean the camp has not been great for him." His, again, we always kind of thought this with him, that he probably made a better safety than a corner. Because his physical, the best trait that he had was his ability to run and um, tackle. And he kind of was a little too physical at times in college. Like, he, he, he grabbed a lot. It's like, well, maybe if we play this guy off ball in center field, maybe he's better there. Because he can tackle in the open field. So maybe that helps. I don't know. We'll see. And the, the sad thing about that is, is that there's so many players that are young that play that position already, like Holland and Jones. I mean, that's their position for the next ten years. They're not going anywhere. So it's it's kind of tough. And maybe he's a better slot. I mean, he's a physical player. He would be a good run defender at that position. You know, there's the old you know thing people always brought up and it's, for some reason it's always in college football and sometimes in the NFL people are like oh you want to run at the slot corner that doesn't want to or even the corner that doesn't want to tackle and get physical he's not one of, and there's really none of those guys on this team maybe X I, like he's probably the only guy that I would say isn't I mean, he's physical at the line but even X I've, I've seen tackle so um I don't know 
I don't know what you do with Igbenogany. Uh, hopefully he gets better. That's the best I can, can, can really say about that. This next question comes from 2Live. He says, question of the day, who will be our next All-Pro this season? <clears throat> um, I mean, uh, I could see Ogba making an All-Pro team for sure. I could see someone like who's a who's a really good contributor make the the team because of the amount of wins that we're gonna have. Um, I could see that. Um, X, I mean, I could see Byron making it um, for sure. Like the year that um, Jalen and uh, Boye made the. Uh, I don't think they both made first team, but I think they both made. Uh, obviously, Jalen made first team. I think AJ made second or third. So I could see that happening with Byron. And same thing with Ogba. I could see him making second or third or maybe even first. Jerome for sure could make it. McKinney could make it too. Um, so there's a lot of candidates on defense. Offensively, I don't know. It would be kind of tough. Um, I don't. Uh, who has the best chance on offense to make an all-pro team? Albert Wilson. If he is the same Albert Wilson that we saw against Chicago, he could do it uh, for sure. He could definitely make a third team. Jesse Davis, maybe? I could see him. Maybe he's. I think he's pretty much at his peak. Uh, and it's not... His peak isn't bad. Uh, I'm trying to think of... I mean, Tua could... Just kind of depends. I could see Tua making third team. That would be crazy if he did that, though. That would be very difficult for him to do. But uh, if you won a ton of games, I could see it. I think, like I said, I think if this team wins a ton of games, you're going to see at least two other guys make it. So I, I think defensively is where you kind of have to pick. Like Byron, McKinney, Ogba. Uh, who else am I thinking? Um, yeah, I think those are the guys, Jerome. Those are the guys that could definitely, I could see for sure making one. This next question comes from Jag Pack. He says, "Are you worried about no other reports out of camp, or that he's getting beat consistently?" Jag Pack. We've been worried about him since uh, the Bills game. I mean, he's been bad since the Bills game. He had a good game against the Jaguars, but that was scheme. It had nothing to do with him. We we helped. I mean, we were playing zone and just kind of beating the only the reason we dominated on defense so much. Byron had a good game that game. X had a good game. I think X did play that game actually. Um, did, did X, X did play in that game, didn't he? It was Byron that was hurt, not X. I keep getting that mixed up. Um, okay, the, okay, so back to what I was saying. Okay, X was out there, and he still looked that bad. <sighs> the reason we dominated on defense, and I know people bring that game up and say, well, Igbenogany didn't, I mean, he made a couple of nice tackles, but... He did have a busted coverage that game that Minshew completely missed. The reason we dominated on defense, X had a good game, but uh, Eric Rowe had a good game too, but uh, we won up front. Like our, Their offensive line stood no chance against our defense. They didn't win a single snap for the most part in that game. So uh, even the, ga- the game that people bring up, which is the Jaguars game, number one, it was the Jaguars. Number two, it, it was really mostly the front that, that won that game. But, yeah, I mean, I think we're... I don't know. I was never not worried about him. He is a weird player, man. He's not tall to be a dominant cover three guy. Um, tall enough to do that. The best the best place I could see him is in the slot or at safety. This next question comes from Casey Fanatics. It seems to me the success of the Dolphins hinges on our ability to stop the opponent's run game and not... Uh, Again, this question comes from Casey. It just it seems to be the success of the Dolphins hinges on our ability to stop the opponent's run game and be able to establish the run when we have the ball. We already know that we have the weapons added to our passing game, and we should be great in that area. Our defense against uh, passing opponents is a plus. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Obviously, I agree. I mean, our third, we were top three in third down, top ten, uh, really top three all year in scoring, so yes. Uh, my disclaimer, my above statement doesn't apply to the Chiefs and Bills. Those teams must be beaten by pressuring the quarterback repeatedly and doing the above. Um, so your question is, is, well, I mean, I don't know, man. There's not a ton, I mean, there's, um, 
yes, you have to be a good run defense too, and especially to be bad teams. So yes, I agree, and I, I don't think that's something you have to worry about because of the players that they've added in the offseason. McKinney is going to be the biggest difference in that. McKinney is a force in the run game. So and John Jenkins is a good run defender too. Um, and obviously Raekwon coming back for another year, he's going to move to defensive end, which I think helps out the run defense a lot because he's more of a set the edge than he is leverage inside. So I think that helps out. Um, so yeah, I think all of those things, the additions that we made in the offseason, Jalen Phillips is going to help that too. Um, so I don't think you're going to have to worry about the run defense. I, I guess the run game is, the, is the, the biggest concern when you think about off. I mean, quarterback obviously was probably number one, and I think that's pretty much gone away at this point. But um, uh, I, I guess now the, the thing that is the most concerning is the run game. But I, I don't know. I'm not really too concerned about it. This next question comes from... because Here's why I'm not too concerned about it, Casey. And it's something Brian said in his press conference, which is true, is if you can pass it and you can stretch the field like that, the run game is going to become way easier. Way easier. So I think the run game, at the very least, is going to be better than it was a year ago. And it got better towards the end of last year. That was the best part of the win against the Patriots, the the win against the uh, Raiders. We had a good run game in those games, so it got better. This next question comes from Ahmed. He says, uh, how disturbing is it that this team is going to uh, tackle shopping now weeks before the start of the season the rookie they traded up for using two picks is a lingering leg injury and the other first round hasn't their other first rounder hasn't been heard about since being sidelined due to injury instead of trading up for suell and then trading down with the other pick oh you're okay so you're talking about jalen the other pick of uh, for Rashard Bateman, the team went with quality, ready to start now over a quantity approach, and it's clearly questionable with most of their draft picks dealing with injuries and Eichenberg not being good enough to play tackle now. Okay, well, I disagree with a lot of things you just said. Um, the receivers are, even if Jalen is injured, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, look at camp so far. And even people that, like I said, that aren't affiliated with the team, that are NFL Network guys that went there, they're like, the the depth of the receiver is crazy, dude. It's crazy. It's actually insane. Like, when you start thinking about it, it's like, dang, man. And they're all, they've all looked great. Dude, Alan Hur- Isaiah Ford has looked great. Um, He's caught a couple of deep passes. So, the receivers are the last, like, thing I'm really concerned about. Um... So I guess your thing, your thing is, is uh, they should have taken Soul or traded up to take Soul. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see about that. I don't. I mean, Austin Jackson and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesse or Eichenberg or even Kinley at that spot, I think is okay. Uh, not even okay. I think it could be pretty good. Um. I don't know. I kind of disagree with, uh, and I'm still. I don't think Jalen. I mean, I know. I know that people are complaining about the limp, but uh, I mean, he's looked fine to me. So I don't know. I just disagree with the, with you on that. I, I I can see what you're saying about the whole soul thing. Maybe that was the better route to take. You could make that argument, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, Soul hasn't played either yet, so. We'll see. And he has actually missed training camp because of COVID, I think. This is a question comes from Jack Pack. At least, uh, at least uh, Waddle, you know, had a camp so far, at least. This is a question comes from Jack Pack. He says, so it sounds that they're going to have Eichenberg play guard. Do you think they are trying to or, uh, ease him into it? Or is it something we should be concerned about since he was drafted as a tackle? No, I mean, everybody around the league and people that took him kind of knew that, like, that's probably what he would do on the next level. I think he could play tackle, um, but I think that's kind of the, what the intention was. And a lot of people forget, you know, the interior of this line was probably the weakest part of it because of the run game was so bad. Um, and our ability to be physical and dominate up front. So that's where they kind of were like, we got to fix that. I think they're fine with Def Davis there. And even if they have to move Jackson to right, I don't think they're too worried about that. Either way, those two guys have played tackle a lot. Not Austin, but uh, Jesse has. So 
and Austin looked good last year, especially as a pass protector. And even as a guy who can pull around the, the edge a little bit, he, had, he showed some, some promise there too. Um, so I don't think the Eichenberg thing is that alarming. And I think a lot of people kind of figured that this would happen. So I don't, I don't worry about it. I, again, it's a way, it's more of a wait-and-see thing with the offensive line. This next question comes from Julian. He says, great news to hear about X. Go Dolphins. I know. Fantastic. This next question comes from Armando. He says, hey, Skaggs, what, do you, uh, w- what players do you think will make the cut on special teams? And how do you rank our special teams among our conferences? Love your show. Thank you. Thank you, Armando. It's number one by far in the special teams. Um, rank... I mean, you got Fedulum, Hollins, Jakeem, uh, even Lynn Bowden, I can see playing some special teams. Um, who else? I'm forgetting other people. Shaquem Griffin. Um, um, who else? Obviously, Sanders and Polardi. I guess it's pretty much, those are the kind of the guys that you think about. Um, so yeah, I think it's number one, and I think there's all, all those guys are great special teams guys. T Zone, he says, who starts opposite of Phillips week one, Beagle or Ginkle? Whew. Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, Van Ginkle, for sure, because obviously if Agba plays more of a three four D end, and I think I could see us playing a lot of four three fronts too. Um, so I could see him playing four three. A good amount this year, especially on pass rush downs, because we like to go three down linemen um, sometimes on third down, especially. So I could see like your three those on that on those fronts. I could see maybe even they put Ogba inside. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I think your bookends would would be um, Van Ginkle and Phillips. Thoughts on the new X deal? Love it. This next question comes from Casey. He says, what is your favorite Miami Dolphin of the past on defense? Mine is um, Orford, Orf, Orf, Offerdahl or Zon. I don't know why. I, 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 I don't know if that was a stutter or my brain just shut off. Uh, Offerdahl or... Um, so your favorite Dolphin on pa- is Offerdahl and your, on defense is Zonka. That's a weird one. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, uh, of all time, um, I mean, defense, Jason Taylor, offense, um, whew, I mean, Dan, probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, there's so many great often. I mean, Bob, I have a Bob Greasy jersey. He's one of my all-time favorites. And the guys from the 70s have such a unique... Because the NFL Films was, like, at its peak in the 70s. So a lot of that stuff... And my favorite America's games are the 70s teams. Those those teams are hilarious. Like, just some of the stuff that they would do is ridiculous. Like, nobody would do that. The stuff that... It, I mean, it's crazy. Like, how different the game was and how different the approach to the game was back then. Um, and like I said, NFL Films, Steve Sable, they were like kicking. I mean, it was like it was. They kicked it in big time in the seventies. Um. So, yeah, those are those are some of the guys that. And Zonka, obviously, the perfect backfield is a great is a, a great football life. Um, and the America's game, uh, the the seventy two teams, America's games are great. All the seventies to America's games are great. I wish no. Nah, I'm getting see now. I'm getting off on tangent. This is a question comes from T Zone. He says, who, "Who do you think will start at free safety and why?" There, well, safeties are kind of interchangeable on this team. I think the two safeties that will start probably McCordy. This is a rotation. The thing about safeties is it's almost like it doesn't exist on this team because um, they do so many different things. I mean, sometimes they line up inside, one on one on a tight end, and it's like, kind of like they're a nickelback, but. And on blitz pick packages, um, they line up uh, as if they were corners because if it's a zero man coverage. So I would say Jason McCourty uh, and probably Eric Rowe. I could see being the starters, and then you're gonna get Holland and Jones sprinkled in on some packages. 
kind of similar to how it was last year. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. I love doing these every year, or every year, every week. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down in the comment section below how you're feeling after the, the great week as, um, week as uh, fans. I'll see you guys in the next one.